Bipartisan. <laughs> you are the president. <laughs> right. Can you, uh... Roger! Oh, I can't. <laughs> can I make three rights? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's your head in front of the light. Tell us why you Well, from the whole tenor of the meeting here, uh, which was representative of the conservative position of the Senate, and by the fact that we were sitting uh, behind them, joining in on this press conference, uh, by our silence, we were acquiescing in this. And the position that I'm sure all of you got was that this conservative group of senators had already acquiesced in the position, uh, with minor weak exceptions, they had acquiesced in the position that Red China should be seated in the UN. And they were debating, uh, even one of the most conservative members said, now we haven't acquiesced in the seating of Red China on the Security Council, but by saying Security Council, he himself had even acquiesced in uh, seating them in uh, the United Nations. I don't think there was uh, any uh, uh, fight here at all uh, uh, for that position of keeping Red China out. It does not meet the uh, uh, qualifications even of the UN. I'm no great supporter of the UN, but if you're going to have it, uh, you ought to limit it to those nations that are for peace. We are technically still at war with uh, uh, Red China and Korea. We have never wound that one up. Well, is, is it your position that Red China should be barred completely from the United Nations? Yeah. Under present circumstances, yes. What have they done to, to yeah. uh, merit admission? You, what have they done another, to merit admission into the United States and bring all the spies and security risks that we're going to have the minute we open uh, the, the United Nations and beatings up to them and their diplomats? No. You think the president is making a mistake? Sure, we both do. You're why? against the visit to China? Yes, I certainly am against why, the visit to Red China. Why concentration camp? Yeah. If the name that I heard parroted here was exactly that. They're, of the all, they're all supporting the president, and we don't consider his position you, strong. You think yours would jeopardize his uh, chances for re-election? What, what, what would jeopardize his position? China policy and his trip. Well, it certainly isn't going to encourage... Uh, opinion, uh, you're not going to uh, get Red China in the United Nations if you offer to give it to her. I think even if we offered to move uh, the United Nations to Beijing, the, the Red Chinese wouldn't take it. What were you going to say, Mr. Well, as far as jeopardizing his position, I'm uh, politically, he's prim probably trying to undercut uh, the opposition. Let me, let me put it this way. Hubert Humphrey could have never gotten away with his trip to China. You're the president's congressman. Uh, have you made any effort to uh, <laughs> uh, relay your views to him on this? Oh, I sure have. He knows about have it. Have you talked to the president about it? No, I haven't talked to him. None of us congressmen you could talk to the president unless well, you're in a leadership <laughs> position. Uh, as your congressman, don't you think you could get an audience with the president uh, as the president's congressman? I'll tell you what, I'll try. I'll tell him you suggested that I go and see him. Sure, okay? it's a hackneyed phrase, but uh, would you use the phrase soft on communism to describe this? It's not hackneyed to me, and I would describe exactly that, it, that I would describe it exactly that way. I think this position is soft. The position taken here is soft. What they have done, as I say, they have acquiesced in the acceptance of Red China to the UN. I signed the statement and I was very careful. Uh, to have it reworded, and you'll see the ch difference in position of the congressional version and the Senate version. There were some additions there. I wanted it uh, very clear that I was only supporting Nationalist China. I was not supporting the resolution that we are pushing for the two-China policy. I do not support that, and I'm glad to get this position to make my position clear. And that's why I was worried as that went along, and no one was taking a tough line there, although Congressman or Senator Buckley did say that there, there are many different positions up here. It's just that those of us who had the tough position just were sitting back there uh, without any microphones. Why do you think conservatives in Congress have abandoned their long-standing opposition to admitting Red China to the UN? Because it's uh, not really politically wise to buck a president if you're a Republican. John Rare can do it. Uh, some of us Republicans uh, have a little difficulty doing it. Yes, he's a Democrat, but uh, I just, if I have to support, if, if I have to support this type of suicidal policy, uh, uh, such as our new China policy to stay in office, I wouldn't want to be in office. Congressman one, of, one of the reasons that I felt we were here today was to try to counteract the pressure on the president and on our foreign policy from the liberal left and the extremists of the left. And of course, when we come right back to the middle of the road, which is the president uh, has announced his policy, then we've accomplished nothing. Now you're saying Senator Buckley sold out to the left? I only can say what I heard here today, and I'm sure you heard the same. I mean, you know, there's an old saying, uh, white man fool Indian once, shame on white man, white man fool Indian twice, shame on Indian. Maybe Chiang Kai-shek uh, uh, thinks probably he's been too kind uh, to us lately to think that we wouldn't do it two, twice in one generation to him. Uh, the Chinese, though, are a very patient people, and uh, as Chiang Kai-shek once said on national TV, he said that uh, we uh, always honor our commitments and we expect other people to do it. I don't think he's going to expect us to do it anymore, but I, I, I want him to feel, and one of the reasons we're making an issue out of this is I would like Chiang Kai-shek and the Chinese people, whether on the mainland or on Taiwan, uh, to know that there are many people in the United States who would like to honor our commitments to the Chinese people, uh, whether they're the Chinese people under bondage on, on the mainland or those who are uh, on Taiwan. And I do not want to regard the people on Taiwan as citizens of Formosa or look forward to the day when we have uh, two nations, one on Formosa and one on mainland China.
Thank you very much. You're welcome.